Hi and welcome to another of the DTA screencasts. We're looking at anatomy and physiology today and primarily muscles. So we'll uh, get started. First thing is that at A level we presume a certain amount of knowledge that you'll have achieved at GCSE and initially we would expect you to know the names of the muscles. Now you may have learned them in a slightly different way and the terminology that you would have used might be slightly different. So for example, for the calf, we term and call them the gastrocnemius and the soleus. So there are differences between A level and GCSE. So what we need you to be able to do is identify all of the names of the muscles before you actually start. Okay. So the first thing we'll look at in this screencast is how muscles move. So what you should know is that muscles can only pull. There are no muscles that can push. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. So here we've got our bicep and tricep, but what we call they, uh, this, in, as I mentioned the detail, is bicep brachia. So that's the actual name that we're gonna use from now on in. So what happens in the sense of pulling is a muscle contracts and pulls on the bone therefore causing movement, relatively straightforward. And the other thing that we can identify here is that the tendons are the things that are attaching our muscles to bones. Now that's for almost all of our muscles, so always uh, try and remember that, note that down, that tendons are the things that attach our muscles to bones. Um, and also, another thing that you might have identified, if not, um, this relatively new knowledge, then agonist pairing. What does that actually mean? So what that's identifying is that muscles work in pairs. So in this situation, you have your bicep and your tricep working together. Whilst one is contracting, the other one is relaxing. So to raise our arm here, the bicep brachia must contract, therefore pulling our arm upwards like so. But this muscle here, the tricep, is relaxing. And I'm sure most of you have looked at that before. So if we turn that round the other way, our arm is now lowering down, we could turn around and say that our bicep is now relaxing and our tricep is contracting. So if you just literally lower your arm as you're doing that, is that actually the case? So fundamentally we can say yes, but we're again we're going to look in a little bit more detail about how muscles move and how that's not always the case. And this is where we'll have a look at this. So there are different types of contractions. You might have heard of some of these before. So we look at concentric contraction first of all. This is where the muscle length is shortening. And that's the key term you need to note down. So in this instance, if we're doing a bicep curl, the hand is moving closer towards the shoulder. Therefore, this muscle here has to shorten. And we identify that as a bicep brachia. Okay, now if we had a weight in our hand and we were lowering that weight, then the bicep brachia is lengthening, so therefore it's no longer a concentric contraction. We call that an eccentric contraction. So here we have the example using a dumbbell. So you have the concentric contraction where the bicep brachia is shortening, and then in the lowering phase, so as it comes down, we then have the eccentric contraction of the same muscle because this one is slowing down the process of lowering. So if we went back to our previous slide and we had the raising and lowering, we could argue that even though the agonist and antagonist are working together, the same muscle is doing the work here. But they're working concentrically when it must, the angle shortens here and then working eccentrically when the angle increases. Okay, we will go over this more in the lessons using practical examples, so don't worry if um, it seems a little bit confusing. The other thing that we need to note is both of these types of contraction are with movement. And you may have heard of this term before, this isotonic contraction. But th all this is doing is turn around and saying that our concentric and eccentric contractions are part of the isotonic uh, group. So, if these are both with movement, there must be a contraction that has no movement. Let's have a look at that. 
and this is our isometric contraction. This one here is where the muscle length stays the same. So can you think of an example where muscle length is actually contracting, it is working, but it stays the same length? Absolutely right, the plank there, and also uh, a better sporting example would be the crucifix in gymnastics. Okay, so there are three different types of contraction. The next little section we, ne we need to look at, and again, this is a very important part for A-level, is core stability. You may have heard of this term before, and one of the ways that we can improve that is by doing the exercise, the plank or uh, sit-ups. Any of those exercises would be fine. But what we need to know for A-level is what's the purpose of this, what's the advantage of having a good core stability or core strength, and it supports most of our physical movement from our arms and legs. Secondly, it enables joints and muscles to work more efficiently if we have a stronger core. And lastly, as a knock-on effect, what that means is we have a reduction of risk of injury, which is always going to be good. So that's the importance of a core being really, really strong. Okay, and then uh, another little difference between GCSE and A-level that we need to identify is terminology. So as I mentioned before, we need to go in more detail. So you may use the term hamstrings if we're talking about the backs of our legs. However, what we need to do now is use these terms here, bicep for Morris, semi-tendinous, semi semimembranosus as well there. Now you won't be asked directly to name the different muscles within your hamstring, but when answering a, a bigger question, if you just use the term hamstrings, you'll definitely not score any points, but what you would use is the term hamstring group and then name each one of the different muscles. And that's gonna be the difference between uh, a good answer and one that's not gonna score as well. So let's look at another example, quadriceps. I'm sure you're all very familiar with that, but let's use the correct terminology now. And what we have is vasta intermedius, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, and vastus medialis. Again, you would identify the quadricep group and then name the muscles within it. Okay. So what you have to do is identify all of those muscles within the body and making sure that you're applying them to sporting examples when appropriate. But principally what we're talking about is the depth of the detail. Um, each one of these will be in your booklets, so make sure you go over them before the sessions. All right, and our last little section that we need to look at, the difference and uh, specific detail we need for AS, is this, the, the rotator cuff muscles. So these are muscles that are located in our shoulder, and you can see the names of them here, supraspinatus, suprascapularis, teres minor, and infraspinatus there. So four muscles within our shoulder. So what's their purpose? Bit of a clue up here, movement and stability. So the movement that it gives us is lateral rotation. So an example of lateral rotation is where we move our hand from here out away from our body. And you can see the exercise being carried out there. So an example of that sporting example would be a backhand in tennis where you're moving your arm away from the central line of your body. And the other type of movement that we can have from our rotator cuff muscles is the opposite way. So we're moving our hand from this point here uh, back across our body. And this is known as medial rotation because it's moving towards the mid line. And that's how we try and remember it. And an example you could use is completion of a tackle in rugby. So as this person has had to move their arm from this position here, around up to here, we would call this medial rotation. So that's the movement aspect of the rotator cuff muscle. And we're looking at the final part here, which is the stability. One of the other jobs of these rotator cuff muscles is very, very important. It prevents dislocation. It holds our joint in place. And as you can see on this lad's shoulders here, this one, normal, all the rotator cuff muscles perfectly in place, and I've kept that one in, intact. However, this one here 
something is called a dislocation. So that's the purpose and very important purpose of the rotator cuff muscle. Okay, that's the end of the screencast. Uh, make sure you take notes on the, the sheet that you've been given. Thanks very much.